Alright, welcome back. I hope you were blessed by that music. I tell you what, don't worry no more. Won't worry no more. By Shadrach. Well, I tell you, if you just tune in our lesson this week, we're in the lesson for the fourth quarter of our Sunday School series of lessons. Uh, this lesson is for Sunday, October the 17th, 2010. And our unit for the month of October is God sustains the subject seeking refuge for this week. Unified topic, God provides refuge. The scripture, Psalms 46, 1 through 7. Background scripture, Psalms 46, 1 through 7. The main thought of this lesson this week is God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Psalms 46 and verse 1. Our outline for this week, the first outline, mighty fortress. And that means shelter, safe place. And we talked about this lesson a little bit. And some of the key points that we came up with on this lesson is that God is our protector. This is why he tells us that we don't have to worry about a thing. That we can stand still and he will fight our battles. Because every time we try to fight our battles, we don't do anything but mess them up. Because we have already lost before we even get started. Because when we fight our battles, we fight it with a con of mind. We fight it with a selfishness. Um, we try to do it in a way that is pleasing to the flesh. But when God fights our battles, he does it in a way that's pleasing to the spirit, that he will get all the glory and he'll get all the honor. Dr. McKenzie puts it like this. We can pray and we can thank God for our healing. We can thank God for our deliverance. Because one thing we already know, that on the cross back at Calvary, he fought the battle. But Dr. McKenzie said, and I won. And I can attest with that and I can agree with Brother Dr. McKenzie and the highlights that Jesus fought the battle, but I won. So we need to remember that he is a mighty fortress and that he can take care of his children. Our second outline, and that outline is verses 2 through 3. And the title of it is No Fear. The scripture reads as follows. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters therefore roll and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swallowing thereof, Selah. And Selah means to give God praise and exalt God in one instant. Salah also can be taken as a musical note to pause or stop. Also, some would say, when I have read verses 2 and 3, Salah will mean that. Think about all of this that has been read and been said and what God does for us. And then that second outline, as we give you a note or two. Remember when God uses mountains in the scripture, Mountains means have spiritual meaning, similar to great problems, life's troubles. Now, sometimes we allow God to fix problems, but we want to allow him to fix the small things. I heard Lee Williams of the Spiritual QC say on the Gospel Legend, I thought I can give him a headache, but I found out that I can give him everything. And we need to realize that. We need to give it to him. And let him fix it. Let him work it out. Allow him to do it. Because we already know when we get in the way with our flesh, with our fleshly ways, our fleshly thoughts in most instances, we don't do nothing but mess it up. But when Jesus fixes it, oh, it's well done. It's well done. Uh, Dr. McKenzie said again, he fought the battle and we won. Okay. Um, some more about this. David is letting us know that we can trust God 
no matter what happens. This also should remind us of Job, all the things that came on Job and how Job was suffering and going through. But he said, all my appointed days and all my appointed times, I'm going to wait on the Lord. I'm going to wait till my change come. Mm, my God. I mean, God allowed everything he had to be gone. But he still believed that God was able. Even when his wife told him the curse is gone and die. My God, my God. Oh, y'all, these lessons, I wish I could talk more about them. Okay, but we do give you something to think about. And as we talk about um, the last outline, the third outline, the scripture reads as follows. There is a river. The streams thereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. And then it goes on to say, verse 5, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early. It goes on to say in verse 6, the heathen raged. The kingdom were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. Verse 7. Huh. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Say lie. But as we uh, broke these down and just talked about some things up in these scriptures here, God's ongoing presence. Okay, when you talk about river, when you talk about streams, of course, John the Baptist came baptizing in the Jordan River. Oh, we're talking about a river, preparing the way for Jesus Christ. And then when you talk about these rivers and these streams, and we talk about the tabernacles of the Most High, we think about God's blessings and his restoration. Also, in verse 5, we find that Verse 5 and verse 4, we find that, that maybe if you really trust in God, he will take care of you bodily. You don't have to worry about any illness. You don't have to worry about any sickness. Or you can just ask him to heal. When the doctors tell you one thing, you can say that I know I have a God that's able and I can trust him because I know what he did and what he said in his word concerning verse 4 and 5. Then we talk about verse 6. We talked about things that will take place in the end time. The heathen rage, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. And we're talking about people, mothers against daughters, daughters against mothers, fathers against sons, sons against fathers, uh, people coming down on the church. But God had to come up. The heathens are rage right now. Everything goes, anything goes. They want to make everything laws. They want to take God off of everything. They don't want us to talk about Jesus. They don't want you to pray about the true and living God. Because the word of God, the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E, that's the book for me I heard when I was young. The King James Version. Let's you know before all this, all this stuff have come to pass what it's going to be like and what it would be like. Number seven. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Okay. However, we don't have to worry with all this stuff going on. We can exalt God. Selah. God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise his holy name. We can exalt him because if we are anchored in Jesus Christ, because we have been sealed unto the day of redemption, and the race is not given to the swift, nor victory to the strong. But he that endured to the end shall be saved. We can rejoice and we can know that all is well. And some other things that we should get as we read these verses. These verses should make us think about the children of Israel. God's chosen people. It should, we should remember that no matter how they did, whether it was good or it was bad, he was still with them. And that lets us know today, we all have learned or we should learn, I know, I know, 
that those that us have a relationship with him knows that he is still the same, that he promises never to leave us nor to forsake us. And we should hold to that and know that God is with us and that he will supply our every need and he will take care of us. Well, we trust and bless that you were blessed by this lesson and you got something out of it. And we want you to go and continue to study this lesson over this week. We told you in the early part of the lesson some of the uh, daily readings that you can read and you can more understand what God is trying to say to you. Because you do need to get in your quiet place and in your secret closet and ask God, what is all this to me? Well, I'm we're going to pray. Father, we thank you for another opportunity to come to your people. Lord, we hope and trust someone was blessed, God. We know that your word won't go out and come back, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for giving us um, the words to say, God. Giving us the messages that needed to be cried or carried across your nation, God. And Lord, we just believe in that you're going to do just what you said that you're going to deliver us, set free, and save, and you're going to take care of your own. And Lord, for those that may not know you in the parts of their sin, God, we trust that this word touched. And Lord, we, touched, we trust that someone else, they'll go to a church, they'll go somewhere where they'll listen to the radio, and this word will be quickened, and that they'll become a believer, and they will accept you in the parts of their sin. And we'll know that our coming, and I was taking time to talk about this word will have not been in vain. In Jesus' name, we thank you for what's already done. We realize that you fought the battle, but somebody has already won. In Jesus' name, amen. Until next time, God bless you. I've been